In this next session, I'm going to talk about an ST map warp. So we talked about using grid warp and spline warp, and we talked about transform tools and how they generally work. This is a workflow that I developed years ago. And I was talking to some people, and they were telling me about some hacks you can do using an ST map tool. And an ST map tool is basically built to take a UV output from a 3D program and apply that map to a texture and form it. So you can actually use it to shape things to look like they came out of 3D. But you can also use that in 2D space. And that's one of the things, when I built this method, I was looking for a faster, simpler way to do grid warps. And it's a really simple process to start. Basically, you have your input. In this case, we have a checkerboard. I then use an expression node. And the expression node is giving me what is effectively a blank UV map. So if we look at it in red, we have a gradient this way. And if we look at it in green, we have a gradient north-south. You can also create this using ramps. And it's basically a ramp from zero to format, X, Y, and then R and T. Uh, it's also worth noting that this is a half a point offset. You basically subtract half a pixel to all your values and that'll give you a dead center map so that when you apply your ST map, it will be one to one. In your ST map tool, you set up your UV channels as RGB. Sometimes you can pipe these in. You can actually really do some interesting stuff with this where you maybe have piped it through a 3D tracker or a scale or some other set of tools and you might want to bury those as a, you know, as a UV pass. But for most, most applications, you would just use it as a UV and you would plug it into the ST map input. So that's a very simple ST map. And what we're doing is basically telling this to remap this image using this UV. Why I sort of started using this workflow is where you would normally use a transform mask or three or four, eight transform masks all piled together. So say we had an image and we needed to do some patching and then that patch has another little patch. You're trying to kind of daisy chain patches together to make something work or to remove something. You know, say in this case, we have a patch here and we have a patch here and we need those to kind of feather off and, you know, play nice on top of our main footage. The problem is, and this is really clearly shown using a checkerboard, if it's kind of a flat, you know, wall or something like that, these semi-transparent areas might blend together. But when you put it back on top, it kind of becomes a muddy mess. And so then you wind up spending a lot of time trying to deal with these edges or creating more patches. And the whole thing really gets pretty messy. And as you'll see here, I have a little bit of animation on these. And it just, it really looks kind of, kind of gross. So what I discovered is you can use the UV and you can actually cut out patches of that apply translation data to those and then merge them back together to create a new map and then apply that map in one pass to your original source. So in this case, I've done the same thing. I start with a map. I have my patches, as you can see here. The key is then I'm to merge those back on top. So now my patches are, and you can kind of see this if we hit play, it's a little bit hard, but our patches are now working on top of our map. So all the semi-transparent areas are filled in by the map being merged back underneath. And then we're taking that and we're applying that to the ST map. So here you can see it's now applying that, but because of the way the color interpretation works, between those patches, it actually blends the effect of those movements. So here you can see it's warping and stretching between the two as they move against each other, but it's not creating a double edge. It's not creating weird issues at the semi-transparent areas. And it can create some really, really organic warping. And the other really nice thing about it is it's single point based. So each point is contributing the movement and then we use our roto shapes to actually define where those shapes are influencing so you can see here just click and drag i can change how much that track area 
is influencing everything around it or how much of that warp is falling off to its background. And if I could play here, you can see it plays back almost instantly. It is a very lightweight tool set. You know, it's really definitely a good thing to have in your quiver. I know some of you are thinking this is looks kind of strange and looks kind of weird. So here's a little bit more of a practical application of how that would be set up. And this workflow is a little bit outdated, especially now with Smart Vector being what it is. But before Smart Vector was a thing, the only other way to do this would be to corner pin it or to use a grid warp and manually animate the grid warp to match. So in this case, I've gone and I've tracked our image. So I have five track points on this logo on the shirt. And then I start with our map and then each of those points I have designated an area. So if we actually view this and I click on the roto, so you can see our roto is influencing this area here. And if we go to the next one, it's influencing this area here and so on and so forth. Each of these transforms is output from that tracker node of just that single track point. So each area where that track came from is now represented by a shape. We're then stacking all of these together. And it's important to know that stack order can be important here. In this case, I've actually taken the center area and I've set that on top last because that's really going to be the focal point. So I want my edges to be tracked with the other four, but I want the center to be derived from my center track point. Again, it's important to merge that back on top of your original map. And then we're piping that into our ST map tool. We have gone and created our logo. We've matted it out accordingly. Then we apply our map to it. In this case, I've molted it down so that we can kind of see some of the work. And then we're taking that patch and we're putting it back on top. So if we go full screen with this and I press play, and this is caching as we speak, you can see that this is loading really quickly. And you can see for the most part, this track is sticking surprisingly well. And again, it's not as good as a smart vector might be, but there's also times where a smart vector might not work. And this is a really good method to have. And it's really, really fast. You know, say we need to make some changes here, like the influence of our center track is maybe too strong or too weak. We can very quickly go to our roto shape and we can drag our shape out and you can see it changing the influence of our tracker as we move it. There's no waiting. There's very little risk of these gumming up a render farm. It's a really simple node that renders really quickly. You know, say we even want to shrink this and say we wanted to even do something crazy like maybe the center of our patch needs a little bit of rotation. So we can come in here you can also use blurs to really soften the effect of how the different pieces merge together. So you can really make fast adjustments and then we can hit play and it plays right away. You know, in this case, again, smart vector would probably work pretty well, but there have been cases where you really, you can't get a good vector track, like on a face. I've had to actually do a lot of face work and this is a really, really effective workflow for that because it gives you really organic, warping without having to worry about the bezier points and handles that you would have to work with with a spline warp or a grid warp. So that's the ST warp method and this script will be included with the files for this series.